Before I start, I promised a shout out to everyone in the comments section in the previous video. So there's Satan but German and also gender a painful. Hello there. Okay, I don't know why I did this, but let's just go with the rest of the video. As much as it pains me to admit it, pseudoscience and pseudo intellectualism are just a fact of life. You can't expect that among billions of people, nobody will say, ah, yes, I, I certainly am an intellectual and a good physicist without actually having any fucking idea what they are talking about. Obviously, there will be shit like goop and the people who think the word quantum magically makes them credible and people who construct the most batshit insane meaningless word salads for a youtube video for other people to pretend they understand their transcendent wisdom but what if such a video didn't come from a professional bullshit maker but oxford inviting someone for a speech and q a of course oxford wouldn't do this this is fucking stupid but they did and that's why i'm here actually they invited Terence Howard, an actor who says that at heart he's very interested in physics. And I don't mean to gatekeep physics, I myself don't know that much about it, but just to give you an idea of what this guy says, he will endlessly argue that 1 times 1 equals 2 because of the conservation of energy, but I can't do it justice by myself, so we have to watch this catastrophe. But let's start giving credit where credit is due, because up to 4 minutes 40 seconds he's just talking about how he overcame the struggle of starting in acting with no experience and he also says some inspirational things about not losing yourself and your motivations it's a nice message i can appreciate it thank you terence that's very nice and then he just does a sharp 180 and drops a fat shit for the rest of the video you may think you've been here for 20 years on this planet but we know that energy it is forever it doesn't die it continually recycles itself so you know that you've been a trial of bite 350 million years ago, or some part of it, some parts of you were part of a, a pterodactyl. Every one of us have been a part of everything in this universe, so if we tap into those things in ourselves and remember those things in ourselves, we have that power. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? I think you're referencing the law that energy can't be created or destroyed, but I'm pretty damn sure that doesn't give you pterodactyl powers and memories no matter what. I don't know if that's what he meant, but it sure sounds like it. Alright, let's assume I'm having a bad day, bad enough to go to NASA, kill everyone, and eat all of their brains. After I digest their brains, part of me will be a mix of all those scientists. Does that mean I can tap into so much combined astrophysics knowledge that I'll be able to develop a theory of everything by myself? Oh, <laughs> that, that sounds like evolution on crack, fucking Meruem from Hunter x Hunter. Now, my vocation has been an actor, and I've loved that. I've been able to take care of my family as an actor, but that's never been my passion. I was an actor because it was like Jesus walking on water for tips. That is confidence if I've ever seen it. Surely someone confident enough to compare himself to Jesus would know what he's talking about, right? It was wondering how the universe really came to be. And I fell in love with this thing called the flower of life. You guys know Da Vinci? Do you know what he spent most of his life trying to figure out? Who in here knows the flower of life? Couple? I'm gonna get you something. Because I want you guys to know- Should we uh, hold it? Huh? Should we hold it? Okay. No, no, I'm gonna hold it up. I want you guys to know about a 6,000 year old secret. 6,000 years, mankind has been trying to decipher this one little thing called the flower of life. Terence, I, I feel betrayed. I feel clickbaited. You spent almost a goddamn minute hyping up this flower of life as if it's this magical flower that bears the chakra fruit that then kickstarts the history of Shinobi or some shit. Here I thought you were gonna make Naruto real and then you show a drawing of a bunch of overlapping circles. What the fuck? Come on, man. I, I remember some girl sitting behind me in class showing something like that to me seven years ago. Maybe I should have paid more attention. Who knows? But I don't think a middle schooler is just gonna just fucking wield the power of the universe in one piece of paper. The same symbol has been found in the, the forbidden temples in China, sitting under the fufu dogs, and the foot on it, the flower of life, saying whoever controlled that flower of life controlled the universe. 
I'm sorry to break it to you, Terrence, but what people said about physics and the universe thousands of years ago in some Chinese temple has no more weight than pee pee poo poo. You guys believe in straight lines? You believe there's straight lines in the universe? Well, let me hit you with something. All energy in the universe is expressed in what? It's in motion. If something is still, there's no energy. Kinetic, right? All motion is expressed in what? You look at galaxies, are they expressed in straight lines? Expressed in vortices. All vortices are expressed in what? Waves. All waves are curved. Show me a straight line in nature. Terrence delivers a dose of truth about straight lines, fuck straight lines. And to be fair, yeah, straight lines are damn rare in nature. Most things have some sort of curve to it, some organic shape. In that case, Terrence, you would be ecstatic to know that there is this branch of mathematics called calculus, which is really good at working with curves and real world shapes. In fact, it's everywhere in physics, so you might want to watch some calculus lectures from Khan Academy and then find out how to apply that to physics. That's been the mistake. We've been looking at these straight lines, this Euclidean way of thinking and missing the curvature of nature. So here we are, back with the curvature of nature, and you have all these little pieces. Now this has always been an information system. An information system? What the fuck does that even mean? Also, I'm not sure what he means by Euclidean. If you don't know what that means, it basically is that the space itself is straight, like our universe kind of is. But flash fucking news, you can draw a curve in Euclidean space. Maybe by Euclidean he means two-dimensional, but that's not it either. That doesn't make any sense. Jesus fucking Christ, my brain is starting to hurt with this guy. Word salads are dangerous for your brain if you have any sort of bullshit filters. And say, well, what's the space? Space in between all of these things. Now they've said that all the in-between spaces, if this is the earth and this is the moon right here, all this in-between space is filled with what? A void. There's nothing in the void. Well, I found that there is something in the void. So you say the void is not empty. Well, it just so happens that physicists say that too, so uh, great. Look, I don't understand it either, but you would think that if you like physics this much, you would have caught up with it, right? I mean, come on. And we're gonna talk about a couple of items in here that are so hard to even express here. Afterwards, you're gonna have to just take a look at these. My God, I won't have the time to do it. I couldn't show you, but I am going to show you. The suspense is fucking killing me. Please, Terrence, please just show us your mind-boggling discoveries. Please stop blue-balling us. Ah, damn it, he's just being a little troll here. And this is getting kinda long, so I'm gonna blue-ball you. There is enough in this disaster for three parts. This shit is 52 minutes long. And now like and subscribe for no fucking reason. Nah, just kidding. If you subscribe, you'll get the notification for when I upload part two. Yes, the millions of you watching this will get the notification, so just do it.